Scriabin's Fantasy in B minor, Opus 28, is a piano piece with symphonic aspirations. For about 9 minutes you have to play octaves in the hands almost all the time, at least, and there's some textures that feels almost physically impossible. But it is a masterpiece, with themes like characters in a drama being presented, developed and transformed in an epic display of decisive force. It's all written in Scriabin's romantic paintbrush, with a chromatic struggle going on but still firmly within tonality, and it's accessing his special mystical blend of a magic ambience. I mean, who can hear the second subject and not fall in love at first sight? So before I start to go through the music, let's have a look at the form of the piece. It follows quite strict sonata form. We have a first subject and a second subject, and a closing group or a third subject as part of the exposition. Then there's a development section, and then a recapitulation where both subjects are transformed in an interesting way. And the closing group, and then an extensive coda where Scriabin keeps developing the material all the way to the forceful end. So maybe at the coda, it starts to feel more like a fantasy than a sonata in the form. And there's one common thing that's present in all the three subjects, and it's the dotted triplet rhythm. So in the first subject, we have it, it's tied over. But it's there, and again. And in the second subject, it goes by somewhat more briefly, but it's there. And then in the closing group, the third subject is built on this rhythm as a marching rhythm in the left hand. And in the right hand. So that rhythm is kind of uniting the material in a way through the whole piece. Let's start at the beginning. The first subject is full of anticipation. We start in a soft piano. But there is an underlying force that pushes the theme upward chromatically, one note at a time. And if I just play the top voice of the theme... So this quintuplet is another signature feature of the piece. It has a firm grip on the first subject. And sometimes it's dotted at the end as well the next time. Uh, but then the melody line continues. And then it goes back down. And then it starts over. And the left hand mirrors this direction, so it's pushing downward one note at a time uh, from the beginning. reaching a B there. So the effect is this amazing expansion of the registers. We start on just the one note and the semitone, the chromatic, and then it just starts to expand. After a while it starts over and the second time it finds a new way and it's almost like an explosion of intensity. It's like it, you can't contain all the energy so it's a big climax very early in the piece. Uh, it reaches even higher in the right hand. And the harmony is another classic Scriabin thing. To add to this kind of suspension and it's not clear where we are, 
because the piece is in B minor, but there are not many B minor chords. We have one in the third bar, but it's a B minor 6 with a D in the bass, the third in the bass. So this is not your typical tonic. In fact, it's the same chord he uses in the second sonata. G sharp minor, it's a minor 6 uh, to start off in a not very clear way. So instead he uses the F sharp major a lot, the dominant. Uh, we have it firmly established on the second bar with the seventh in the bass and then in the after this now it's C sharp in the bass, uh, fifth in the bass uh, and it just keeps returning to F sharp major like when it starts over again um, sharp major and then it starts over okay let's have the first subject section So the first subject ends firmly in A major, preparing the second subject to come in D major, which is a relative major to B minor. We don't have to play octaves for a few bars, instead we have these long sweeping but soft arpeggios in the left hand. And the heartfelt soaring melody in the right hand we heard from the intro. So we're firmly rooted with a D in the low bass as a pedal point for five bars. And then we get an entry of the melody again, but now with a canon of a voice one octave lower and one beat later. It's something Scrabbing likes to do when we get it here. It's a top voice and then it's underneath. And so on and then that's for like four bars then it's solo again and this melody keeps on developing and searching for something for many bars and uh, as part of this search it's also growing uh, again as this first subject can't hold it in it needs to uh, reach a climax so often in this piece
this is where the closing group starts or the third subject even. It's a kind of a new texture, but it grows organically from the climax and we get pure vivo faster. And this is like a heavy march with a signature dotted triplet rhythm in the left hand. Kind of uh, turning up and down. Uh, and the right hand has thick filling chords, chromatic. the exposition firmly in D major. We have some super dense chromatic passage in the middle here. And let me address the issue of simplification a bit here. Because I take out some notes and normally you shouldn't do this, but I find if it's super hard technically, like you can have in Scriabin, uh, I do this and this is a suggestion of how you can do but I always have a reason in mind to bring out something musically. There has to be a musical reason for me to do it. And here it's that uh, I want to be able to keep a strong sense of direction moving forward when we get the presto. And I just can't do that with these uh, thick chords. So I take out the top note to be able to play it. Um, that's just my technique is not there really. So this is my solution. So let's have a closing group. So we need four bars of just steel chords to calm down after the, the whole exposition basically and turning from D major to D minor. And here is where the development starts. He starts piano as always to be able to grow. And here he uh, uses a typical development mechanisms. He takes material from all the three subjects and kind of mash them together. It starts like a dialogue maybe and then grows into a confrontation almost. So it starts with a, the same dotted triplet rhythm from the march but in the right hand. There and then the left hand gets a quintuplet from the first subject. And then there's a fragment from the second subject in the higher register with the canon. the same. Now it's it's grown to uh, six tuplets, the five have grown to six. And again. So this quintuplet is like it's deeper and uh, more disconcerting in a way. And the harmony have this lush smooth chords that's major seventh chords. Starts as B flat major seven. Then a few bars later it's F major 7 and then a few bars later it's C major 7. So that's the classic formula of the circular fifth progression with major 7s to make it into really relaxing. But it happens some things in between and then he leaves it and uh, yeah then we get the quintuplet motif in the right hand but it's 6. And then in the end, we get the dotted triplet in the left hand, uh, but expanded and inverted. Like that.
Thanks for watching Sonata Secrets. A special shout out to my Patreon sponsors S. Yao and J. Dog.